Good evening, guys. Um, I did not get your video notes passed out to you, so you can wait until tomorrow night to do these video notes, which would be Thursday night. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with these video notes. Um, so you can either watch or you can wait until you get your video notes page and do them tomorrow night. So we're going to be starting a unit uh, dealing with functions. And we're going to go ahead and start by looking at a quadratic function. As you can see here, we have the parent function, uh, y equals x squared. And we're going to start by writing, filling in the table and graphing and writing its domain and range. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to decide to input some numbers in for x here. So whenever you do an input, you always want to choose, um, I always like to choose 0 as one of my numbers, some negative numbers, okay, and some positive numbers. I'm going to go ahead and add another row here to make it nice and symmetrical. So let's start off with f sub negative 2. Okay, so our input is negative 2. Okay, plugging that in for x, we get 4. Next input value would be negative 1. Okay, let me go ahead and finish this. The 4 represents the output, or y. So inputting negative 1, output, positive 1. Inputting 0. output 0. 1, output 1. 2, output 4. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, I want you to notice the pattern here, okay? It's a good way to determine whether or not you have a quadratic function or not. Notice that at 0, this is going to be where the axis of symmetry is, but this is where the parabola changes directions. So here it's going down to the minimum point and then back up. So plotting these points, negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4. And of course we could continue. We could do 3 and negative 3 and we would continue with this. Man, I'm not getting, it's not cooperating. Okay, so it's curving both directions. Remember that this form, this shape, is called a parabola. Notice I put arrows on the ends because they continue going infinitely to the left and up, and infinitely to the right and up. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and look at the domain and the range. So for the domain, we're going to use... Um, so let's go ahead and write the domain. We're going to do interval notation, interval. And we're going to do set notation. Those are the two notations you need to know. So the domain, you'll recall from Algebra 1, represents all the domain values or all the x values. So if we look here, remember the x-axis, that's this line here. So it's going to infinitely to the left and infinitely to the right. So we would go ahead and use a parentheses. And we're going to start on the left at negative infinity. So it starts at negative infinity on the left. And it goes to positive infinity on the right. Now remember, we use parentheses because we cannot include negative, in, negative infinity and positive infinity because you can never get to those numbers. You can't include them. Okay? That would be interval notation. Set notation, 
Now we would use um, a letter. We would start off with a brace or bracket and we would write X because we're talking about domain and then we would put an like an E like figure which means element so X the domain is an element of all real numbers and we use the we write two lines and then we make an R for all real numbers okay let me write this up here so this symbol here means all real numbers that would be all the numbers on a number line all the numbers on the number line positives negatives decimals fractions you name it square roots okay so we're going from negative infinity to positive infinity so that in involves every single number okay all real numbers negative infinity positive infinity okay range so range remember is lowest to highest okay so lowest point on the graph and remember range is y so we're looking at the y value for this point so that would be zero and we include it because we act, there's actually a point at zero zero we include it okay so we use a bracket to include it and the highest number is going to be an arrow which means it's going to go all the way up to infinity okay now how do we write set notation well all the numbers from zero to infinity are real numbers so we are again we are going to say that x the domain is an element of all real numbers okay then we're going to draw a bar and this bar means that there's an exception okay to this and that exception is that x is greater than or equal to zero but less than infinity so we're actually what this is is we're actually more closely defining um, the element that x is in within the real number domain because obviously it does not go down infinitely so we have to provide some information as to uh, what, what real numbers are we talking about we're talking about real numbers from 0 to infinity 0 being the lowest range value and infinity being the highest range value okay all right let's move on remember if you don't understand something please come and see me it says graph each of the following quadratic functions on the calculator explain how it is different from the parent function okay so we're going to be looking at the uh, parameter changes so if you'll notice here the negative on the front so when you have a negative on the front um, what we have is called a reflection reflection and reflection means to uh, flip okay and in this case we're going to be flipping this parabola over the x-axis so notice all the y values are going to go from positive to negative so it's just going to get flipped down so it says graph so let's go ahead and plug it in I think what I'll do is clear my memory. All right, we have a negative x squared. Check it out. See? The parent got flipped down. Okay? So we go here and we get all the points that we need to graph it. Remember to choose some positive, some negative domain values, some positive domain values, and notice the symmetry notice the symmetry that will always be there with quadratic functions okay so what does this do well when you have a parentheses like this this parameter is going to translate two units left okay so the translating point for this graph is the vertex. 
So this vertex is going to move one, two units to the left, and that's going to pull the whole parabola over two units. So let's take a look. And this happens um, whenever we're dealing with parentheses. Okay, whoops, it was plus, right? And by the way, you know, you would think it's to the right because it's plus, it's the opposite. Okay, it's the opposite. So, opposite direction. So graphing it. So notice how the parent got moved two units to the left because our parent function goes through zero, zero. And notice that this function is going through negative two, zero. Okay? And then we can go to the table and do the graph for that one as well. So, again, important thing to remember, this, it's always going to be the opposite of whatever that is. So if you see a plus, it's going to go to the left. If you see a minus, it's going to go to the right. Good job. So this one's going to translate the parent to units right. Okay? So just imagine this now. Imagine your parent translating, and remember translating, the, the layman's term for translating is slide, okay? Slides two units to the right, so it's going to go one, two. Okay, and now all the other points are going to follow. So let's look at that real quick. I want to go two to the right. So put the minus in there, graph it. And there you go. It shifted two units to the right. All right, we're doing good. We're doing good. Turn the page. Next transformation is we're going to take the parent. Remember, the parent is x squared. Y equals x squared. And this time, there's no parentheses. So this value is going to shift, or I should say translate, uh, two units up. Let's take a look at that. So we have x squared plus 2. Remember what the parent looks like. You see how the vertex got moved two units up? Perfect. So what's going to happen here? Okay, that's for you to tell me. What's going to happen on number 6? Okay, number 7. Now we have a multiplier on the front. And when this multiplier is greater than 1, and I'm just going to call this A, okay, when that value A is greater than 1, we have what's called a vertical stretch. A vertical stretch. Okay? And when that A value is less than 1, which is what we have here, the A value is less than 1, Okay, but it also has to be bigger than zero. Okay, because if it gets below zero, we have a reflection. Okay, you're going to have a what's called a vertical compression. All right, so let's take a look at those real quick. So I think we'll start off with our stretch. 2x squared, and we're going to compare that to our parent, x squared. And I'm going to make my parent a little bit thicker. Enter. Okay. So my parent's going to be the thicker line. There's the stretch. There's the parent. Notice that the parabola appears to be getting narrower when we're stretching. Okay. Now let's take a look at the compression. Okay? Graph it. See how it got compressed? Compressed meaning it seemed to get a little bit wider. So the words here stretch is going to be like narrow, narrower, and compression, wider. Okay. I hope you have a good night. Try to answer these problems for tomorrow. Talk to you guys later. Bye.